All right, guys, we're back now. I've taken the flight control, taken it off the table, and we're gonna get ready to do the motor. So I'm gonna set the frame aside. I'm gonna kind of put my tools away again for a little bit here. Um, just to kind of keep my desk a little organized, although it's not much, I can promise you. Uh, let's get all these tools out of here. All right. All right, I think we're good here. Now, we're gonna go ahead and open these motors, and I want you to pay close attention to something here so you don't end up in the position I was in uh, in the past. So. Openings up, you have, uh, these are the Deadpool 2306, 2650 KV motors. These are 4S motors, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the contents out of the box, obviously, and then you have this little bag here, right? If you empty the contents out of the bag, you're going to see you have this rubber ring. Do not lose this. Best way to not lose it is to go ahead and put it on the motor and then just put your um, uh, prop... Uh, prop nut right here just lock it on there so this this actually uh, goes because there's uh, the motor is the because the bell is not carved up or has any uh, a way of um, stopping that prop from just kind of spinning because it's very smooth they give you this um, rubber uh, o-ring here that goes over and once you tighten this down it actually holds it better onto the prop keeps the prop from spinning uh, around the bell right so anyways so don't lose those all right so what we're going to do and then just remember we're only using three of the four screws and these are actually the screws we're going to use we're only using three of the four to mount the motor so you can get all the motors out right now if you want and just kind of make a collection of the um, screws in one bag and this way you'll know what you need so i'm going to go ahead and open all the motors and get these prepped up i would recommend you do the same just to make sure everything's where it needs to be remember put the screws in a bag and you will need like i said you're going to need 12 screws so if you want instead of 16 so if you want to save 12 so i'm going to put four right there and i'll put the other four so there's my eight so basically you're going to open three of the motors you'll use all the screws and the last motor you don't have to take any of the screws out okay so let's take out motor number three uh, and we'll dump the contents here okay take out the motor here and let's go ahead and put these on these rubber o-rings on so we don't lose them okay there we go all right and then we'll take that set of screws so that will make 12 screws from those three motors and that's all we need since there's only th three screws per motor on this frame. And then we'll take the fourth frame. Let me throw these out. I mean, we'll take the fourth motor here, empty it, take the contents. But the only thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take out the, um, well, I guess I'll take out the rubber grommet and the other piece. I'm gonna put the motor screws back, all right? And you can put these back in the bag and put them back in the frame box or wherever you want. I'm gonna throw this out. And there's our four motors, all right? So let's do that. Okay. Now, when it comes to mount, actually, I'm going to set these off here because I need a little bit of room. So when it comes to mounting these motors, uh, two in the front will be the same wire length, two in the back will be the same wire length, but the front and the back will mo most likely not be the same because the way these mo the way these arms are laid out. So let's do this. Uh, you'll notice that the way this wiring harness, I mean, like the way it's done, it's kind of stuck down at this angle. Don't worry about it. Just you could when you screw this down, it'll it'll flush it'll flush mount it, and you won't have a problem. So let's start with. Uh, if we have the frame sitting like this, we have motor one, motor two, motor three, uh, motor three, motor four. Let's start with uh, motor two, or we'll start with motor one actually. We'll do motor one and motor two, and then we know that the identical will be for the other side. So we'll start with motor one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get ready, and I'm gonna mount this motor to the frame, okay? Just like that. And that is a little bigger, so let me go ahead and get the screwdriver for that. And I'm just gonna kind of don't tighten it too much because you have to line the motor up with the rest of the holes there, right? So just don't tighten it too much. Just get it to where it can stay in. And then we're gonna go to the cross section over here, the right across from it. Make sure we can get that one in, okay? And then we're gonna get the third one in right here, just like that, okay? Now, once you have all three in, you can go. Whoops. You can go, I guess I'll take that off. You can take the ESC off for the timing. Go ahead and just tighten that down, just like this. Okay. All right. Now, what we have to do is we need to figure out how long we want these wires to be, okay, to attach to the ESC. So I took the ESC out. It actually kind of fell out on its own, but I'll put this back in now. So a couple ways you can do this. You can just run the wire straight down. I think for this build, that's what I'll do is I'm just going to run these straight down just like this. All right. And then you can come in and turn them over, or you could just jump across 
to here, just like that. And you'll be able to do the same thing. Um, for the ease of this, just to make it easier on some of the guys that are, this is their first time building, I'm just gonna go have it go this way, all right? Uh, on the one that I did initially, I had them come around on the inside, but I, wanna, I want this to kind of not have a problem. I want everybody to be okay with this. So uh, what we're gonna do first <clears throat> is I'm gonna grab the tape, and you should have some tape that we included with your kit. Uh, and I think, uh, let me see. Yeah. So if I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna do mine here. I believe that you have 300 millimeters roughly. This is how we cut your tape. So we take it, we fold it over the ruler. I believe you have about 300 millimeters of that. All right, so I'm gonna mimic what you should have, okay? All right, and then what you do is you take that tape that we gave you, right? And you're gonna fold it in half. And I'm gonna do this here, and if I feel like we need more tape, then we'll include more tape in the kits, I guess. Let me see, so I fold it in half, because I wanna use two pieces. Uh, and so you fold it in half, and then you fold it in half again. So yeah, you probably need uh, 600 millimeters, but let's just do this. So you may have two straps, and by the time this video's out, by the time you receive yours, you may have two, but once you fold that into fours, you're gonna end up with this right here. So let's cut that. That should be about 150, give or take, 150, uh, sorry, uh, uh, let's see, 150, so it's gonna be about 75 mil. So what we wanna do is let's go ahead and just to make sure we've got our wires the right length, I'm gonna pull this and try to keep it straight, right? And I'm going to, just like this, so get your motor wire and just run it like, run it straight, all right? And if it does happen to go off a little bit off the frame, just pull it back on and lay the tape over it as close as you can to the factory heat shrink that came with the motor right here, right? You want this first one to be, kind of be on the edge of that. And then you just wanna wrap this around, keep it tight, because this is, we know that the motor wires are gonna stay right about here, okay? So that's what that should look like right there. Then we're gonna do another one. And we wanna keep this one as close as we can uh, to basically where this arm screws in. So what we're gonna do is we'll take another piece of our tape Hey, Sam, mark that they need two 300 millimeter strips. Two. Yeah, and I want them to be in two because it's easier to divide that to the fours. So we'll do two 300 millimeter strips of tape, okay? All right. So then you have your other one and you keep, this, you keep the wire straight and you run it here. And if you want to start from the bottom because you can see where the screw is here, right? You can actually just go to where the frame and the arm meet and start wrapping it around. Then when you turn it over and you lay the wire like this, you keep it straight. And I'm doing this because you want it to be neat, right? And if, and if this standoff gets in your way, like this one I think is just keeps getting in my way, right? So I'm just gonna unscrew it for the time being just so I can get this wire to pull straight, right? I'm gonna move that standoff out of the way. Now I can kind of stretch this wire out like I want to, just like that, right? And I'm going to fold this over, making sure that it stays tight down onto the arm, just like that, okay? And I know the arm's kind of wiggling, but don't worry about that. It's obviously gonna be fastened here in just a minute. I just want the wires to be, uh, I wanna know what length the wires need to be here, so I want it to be uh, as tight as I can so we have a nice straight line here that looks clean, okay? Now, I can put this back in. Okay. And then I should be able to get a length here so that you guys can just cut this. But I wanted to give you the option, if you wanna wire it from the inside, I'm leaving you the option to measure it. If you wanna go around the standoff, you can, but like I said, for this one, we're just gonna go uh, straight. So let me put my I can, let me put my EC back in. All right. So what we want to do here is our wire that's closest to the end to the middle of the frame. So we have wire number one is on the outside. Wire number two is in the middle. Wire number three is on the inside. Wire number three is going to go to our first solder point right here. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to basically take this wire and we're going to take it to about right here. Okay. Just like that. And right where we see it hit that pad, we're going to cut it, okay? So let me get my snips here. Okay. 
<clears throat> and then we're going to take, now I'm doing this one so that you guys can have a pre-measurement. We're going to do the same for the second one. Go right after the pad. Okay. And then we're going to do the same for the third one. I'll zoom in on this one so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here. I'm pressing it in to the groove. So let me zoom in here, you see. I'm pressing it into this groove right here between the arm and the, and the ESC. Pressing it in so I have a little bit of slack there. And then I'm dragging the wire until the end of the pad, which is right here. Okay. So as you can see, there's the, there's, the, there's the third pad right here, and I'm going just past that, and I'm cutting this wire just past that, just like that, okay? So now each one will fit perfectly, and each one's gonna be about, oh, I don't know, five millimeters longer than the last one? Look, see? So they look, they're, they're like tiered, okay? I don't know if that's five mil, but let's see. It's gonna be close. No, oh, that's, that's pretty much five mil, four and five mil, all right. So, now what we'll do is we will tin, uh, we will strip the wires and tin them, okay? So there's one. There's two. And there's three. And if you want to know how long these can be, I will show you. These can be about three uh, three mil in length, okay, for the exposed wiring. Now I'm going to lay mine on the table here, and I'm just going to put the flux on them this way and tin them up, okay. And I'm going to twist them just like I did before. Hold the silver, I mean hold the strands, and twist the silicone. Perfect, just like that, all right. I know I'm zoomed in here. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to keep it like that so I tin them. Okay, one wire tinned. And if you happen to see, like on this one, I see a strand coming out. So I'm going to twist it back up again a little bit. And get some more solder. And we're going to tin this one. Okay. I'm going to come out, bring this third one. Try not to tin over the ESC or any electronics if you can so that you don't drop any solder by accident on there, okay? And now, to see how this is going to look, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first pad. We're going to take our uh, tweezers. And we're going to lay this wire on the first pad right here. Just like that. Just gently hold it, it'll melt automatically because we've tinned both. So there goes that. Okay. I need for it to, it needs to um, cool down here. There's one. I'm gonna take the second one, come over here, and just come over the wire, just like that. There's two. And then we'll take the third one. And again, you're going to come over that wire. I'm going to add a little bit more solder here. There we go. Lay it over the third one, just like that, and boom. Okay? Now, if you look at this, you have the wires neatly done. They all come over each other perfectly. They will lay nicely when you put the pieces together. And I think this is a good look overall. It's a safe look. I don't see any problems with it at all. The wires can sit over the frame. They're not exposed outside of the frame. So I think you're set there. And everything here looks really well done. Okay? So <clears throat> now it's time to do, and I'm going to save these because you can use these to determine how long <clears throat> the wires need to be when you cut the next one. Okay? And that's, that's one of the things that we'll do is I'll do it by this, and then you'll have a good idea of how long to cut the other ones. Okay? So I'm going to set that aside. That's for the back one. Now let's do the front motor. So for that, let me zoom out. And we're basically going to follow the same process here. So I'm going to take three screws. Okay, 
And I know my ESC, when I turn this thing upside down, my ESC wants to come out here, no problem. Let's go ahead and do it like that. All right, so now we've got motor two ready to go, and we're gonna do the same thing again. So take your tape, should have been folded there, cut it. Peel that off. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, again, put our tape up against where that factory heat shrink is on the motor where it ends wrap it around one side and then just bring it around and tightly wrap it so that this wire stays in place and remains clean and protected all right there we go now the next one is a little different so because this is a much shorter run it's going to be right here okay what we'll do is we'll do the same thing as before the only thing here right is that you have a longer run from here to here. So we want to make sure that we, we use you know caution. You can come around this way, but what we'll do just to make it easier on the build is we'll come around the outside of the of the standoff, but you just pay attention that you're keeping the wire uh, as organized and in place as possible. So I'm gonna go around here to where the arm and the frame meet. I'm gonna put this right against that edge, okay? I don't think I'm gonna have to take the standoff for this one. I think I'll be just fine. You can just lay it out however you want. What you want to do is you just want to make sure that you keep, actually, you know what? I will most likely take this off. It is kind of in my way again, but let's do it just like that. Keep it straight as best as you can, just like this. And let me get this wire out of my way. Okay. And then wrap it around. All right, once you got it on there, go ahead, just continue. I think I'm gonna press that screw out just so I can get that done better because the screw is kind of getting in my way there. Make sure your wire is perfectly straight and pull tight just like that and then bring the tape over. And now all you have to do is just tighten it and you're good. Okay, so that's done and then we'll put that standoff back on. Let me go ahead and make sure that tape is on there good. It is. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to put the screw back in. Bring the wire around here to the side so that we can put the standoff back on. Just like that. Perfect. Okay, wires are good and straight, and then we're going to do the same process as before. So we're going to take uh, we're going to have our middle and our outside wire put aside. We'll start with our first wire. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to bring it in, right, so that we can keep it at a good distance. Bring it in, okay, so that it can tuck inside here and then come out to the pad, okay, just like that, all right? So once you get it to the pad, remember, take it, cut it right past where the pad is, just like that. This will go aside. We'll bring in the middle wire now, follow the same route, cut it right past the second pad. There we go. And then we'll take the outside wire. And if you wanted to do it just based on five millimeters and extra length, you could do that too. Um, I'm just doing this to kind of show some of the guys that wanted to see how I measure if I'm going outside. So I told them I'd do this. And then you just bring it around and you cut this one. All right, and now if you hold these up, you should have kind of the same pattern we had on the back motor, where each one is about, uh, well, actually this one's not gonna be as long because it's at an angle, but if you hold it up here, you're gonna see that they're about five millimeters in length difference, okay? We're very close to it. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the same thing. We're gonna uh, strip these and tin them. Let's go ahead and do that. apply get this out here use our flux pen apply the flux okay there we go let's tin them up
Okay. And now remember guys, we're going to, the way I hold my soldering iron, I'm gonna go this route. But the way we're gonna do this, remember, is we're gonna go the closest one first, then the next, then the next, okay? So I'm gonna add a little bit of extra, I'm gonna tin these up just a little bit more. I'm gonna add a little bit of more solder to mine. If You can look at yours and get a gauge for if you think you've got enough on there. I'm gonna add a little bit more, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna take my tweezers. I'm gonna start with the first one. And you're gonna see this excess wire here because we're gonna pull it into the frame when we're done. So let's just go ahead and put the first one on. Perfect. Then let's take the middle one. Bless you, perfect. And then we'll take the outside one. Perfect, okay. Then what we're gonna do is to make this look good and to keep the wire safe, we're just basically gonna pull them in just like this. Okay, and we can pull them in and we will have them out of the way uh, when this is ready to go. Okay, so we'll wrap them just like that and they will stay inside the frame and stay out of the flight, out of, out of any obstructions, okay? So now with that done, you can do the next motors. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna twist these up real quick so they don't keep getting in my way. Let me do that real quick. And I'm gonna finish the rest of these motors real quickly. Uh, so uh, feel free to fast forward for the video or do whatever, because it's gonna be the same, uh, the same thing you just saw. I'm just gonna knock this out, but I will not edit the video to fast forward it. So you can stop it now where you can watch me do the rest of them and then follow along if you'd like. Sam, is your phone ringing? No, it's not. And mine is. I don't understand. I had a call earlier, but that was all. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Put this one back in, tighten that down.
so we got those wires done now we can tin them All right, so these are done. Perfect. Once we put the once we put the mounts here, we'll be able to line these up a little bit more. Now we'll do the last motor. Remember to pull that in, to tuck it in, just like that. Got to pull it into this little crevice here. Okay, and you can cut the first one. Little wire 
will go second. There you go. And the last wire will go third, and we will put that here. All right. Now, I would recommend you save the motor wires. They're good wires. Brother Hobby always has some of the best wiring in their motors, so I like to save it in case I need extra wiring. So now we're just going to trim these, tin them, and the motor portion is done. And then we get on to the flight controller. All right, so let's go one. Tin them up. And now attach them to the pads. So one. one we'll go to pad number two here and the outside one will go to pad number three and we get some of that right. there okay and that'll tuck in here as well and now our motors are soldered and done everything looks good and clean we are ready to move on to the next part. Now, if you have these excess wires, find yourself a little baggie. I have one here for me. Save them. Begin your collection, because you will need them eventually. One day, you'll see. So, begin your collection. There we go. Okay. All right. There you go, guys. So I know that's the longest part of this entire process. This actually takes more time than anything else that we're going to be doing. So just take your time. Make sure you've done it right. All right. And then uh, we'll be back here in just a minute to do the next part, which is going to be to now get the flight. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> get the flight controller ready as well. And you'll be uh, you'll be set. So I'll see you in just a minute.